I'm Ron Mickelson. Um, I gave a talk here four years ago on the early history of Hytoro and Omega. Um, I'm going to talk a little, uh, add on to the end of that talk, and I'm going to give this in a sort of a backwards order. Um, I ended the talk, I think, four years ago with um, uh, a, a, the founder of the entire Omega project, Jay Miner. Uh, I talked about him back then from Atari. He also did the Atari GCS, Atari 400-800, as well as the uh, as well as he's the first named inventor on uh, almost all the Amiga patents. Um, let's see, what do I, uh, let's see, let me back up here. Um, okay, where do I go from here? I have something else on another presentation. Let's see, what did I do? Okay, did that, where did I put that? Put that here. No. Oh, rats, I. This is what I get for uh, doing a, an ad lib presentation without uh, remembering where all my stuff is. Um, Film your eye check. Let's see. Is it the keynote? It's not. It might be. Might be. Um, oh, here it is. Okay, this presentation. So um, I guess uh, Bill was lining up speakers for um, four years ago and. Um, I forget who in the grapevine, someone said that you were putting on some talks about the Amiga, and, and um, you know, I looked at some of the names and said, oh, that includes only a few people from the early years, why doesn't it include uh, 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 Joe DeCure and myself, and uh, he said, who are you? And I sent him references to the patents, and so I was allowed, he allowed me to come up and talk about stuff that I barely remember. Uh, since then, I've also given talks in the uh, um, Neuss, Germany, at the uh, event there. And um, this is one I gave at, at the Asilomar Microcomputer Conference, where uh, various people from the earliest days of Homebrew Computer Club um, talk about the, the earliest things that happened in the microcomputer industry. But the talk I gave there, I talked about uh, my project history. And uh, let's see, going back, this is just interesting stuff that I gave before. Um, where I'm walking backwards, you saw this already, um, the Amiga 1000, where it's interesting stuff. Okay, so I was absolutely fascinated. Everybody here is completely familiar, but I just want to tell you, uh, when you work on a, whatever you work on now, how surprised would you be if 35 years later, you walk into a room and there are like one, 200 people absolutely interested in what you did 35 or 40 years ago. I was astounded. I was uh, also astounded that people were still writing code for this machine that I had designed, you know, decades ago. Uh, it's uh, incredibly active, uh, but what I want to say is how, uh, how surprising it is that this happened um, uh, uh, thanks to the Amiga community. I, uh, I'm completely astounded that all these people are doing such amazing work on these things. Here's a picture of the audience standing room only at Noise, listening to my talk. Uh, this is a cheat. This is actually the talk after me because I got off stage and took it. I forgot to take it. Well, I was on the stage like everybody else. They get up there and say, wow, and take a picture on stage. I have to remember to do that. This is the, um, the Amiga 30th event at the Computer History Museum, which also had a huge mm. crowd. Um, let's see, demo scene. Uh, uh, I found after the uh, Amiga 30th event, when a couple of years later, I was digging around the garage and I found this. This is, I think, one of the only existing chip plots of the of the actual released Agnes, the Amiga 1000. Uh, one of these days, I'll get it uh, scanned and, and printed up nicely. I just took a photo off my cell phone with this one. Um, and of course, you've seen Dell Lux platform and stuff like that. Uh, I want to talk a little about it, the technology. I didn't, I didn't talk about it completely last time, but five micron depletion mode. Exactly what does it mean? It means this is the technology that only has one five volt power supply. If the chips just a few years before this, you had to have like uh, minus five and plus 12 and a various other power supplies. And of course, um, CAD tools, what CAD tools? Uh, we did all this. Uh, pencils on Ruby lift, no CAD tools. So let me just talk about some other things that have happened since then. Um, when I worked at um, um, Hewlett Packard following Amiga, um, 
Jay Miner was nice enough to give me one of the early pre-production uh, units of an Amiga 1000 just before the, just after they introduced it at Lincoln Center. So I took it to HP and showed it off to a few people. I showed it off to two engineers in particular. Um, and uh, I, you know, a month later I asked what happened to these two engineers. They'd left. I found out uh, a year later that they had gone on to SGI and uh, Dave Ramsey was in charge of the workstations and Tom Dermalak was their CEO. And basically a lot of it was, you know, I think it was because they looked at the Amiga and said, oh, this is the future, we should do something like that. HP's uh, management, of course, uh, is another story about whether they would do anything like that. Um, how, um, so I went to SGI later also, and um, a story that I have is uh, how do you impress your own family? You know, for some strange reason, Amiga fans are impressed with what I did three, four decades ago. But <laughs> the kids, you know, he looks at the computers I did. You know, I think I showed him a computer I worked at in, in the Smithsonian. And he says, Dad, this is among really ancient old stuff designed by dead people who died a long oh. time ago. <laughs> you know? oh. He was not impressed at all. But I did manage to impress him a little because I worked at SGI and uh, SGI and, and um, this is something actually, uh, it's hard to impress RJ with things, but he was actually impressed that I did this. But at SGI, I worked a little bit on a certain chip for a certain system, and we had prototypes of the software company developing for it because they didn't really know how to write software for it. So what we had prototypes in the lab for six months before it was ever released was, and let's see if I can find um, the punchline to this. Um, where is the punchline to this? That what they were testing in the lab was the prototype for the Nintendo 64 Super Mario 64. So six months before any kid in the US had seen it, I got to practice on it. So I actually impressed him by, for, uh, I think it was for a period of six weeks, I could actually beat him in a video game <laughs> with that head start. So uh, advantages of uh, getting hired because your name's on Amiga patents. The other interesting thing is how do you impress your wife? You know, she's not a computer type. She works in uh, biotechnology. She's the vice president uh, regulatory, and you know her. She's impressed by things that you know is a cure for a new new subset of cancer, right? That's that's impressive, which it should be. You know, she's saving lives. So how do I impress her? Well, um, I impress her by finding out that I am listed twice in IMDb as a performer. So this is, uh, this is only because people are still interested in the Amiga um, three decades later, and um, I think it's the Fletchers and the other movie. Um, uh, Fletcher did one, and um, Rents, I can't remember their name, did the other, but anyway, they uh, interviewed me for two of their documentaries on Amiga, and little did I know that I would end up with an IMDB listing as a performer, and that actually uh, 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 did impress the wife, maybe. For What's your rank? Or whatever. I won't show that. Anyway, so anyway, that's my um, that's my 10-minute talk of a follow-on from uh, the Amiga talk where I talked about all the technical details. I guess you could find that online if you want all the details about uh, the early history of the Amiga and, and the concepts that went into the architecture. Um, and uh, what crazy ideas that we have, some of them actually worked. So anyway, thank you very much for your time.